toys, sometimes they feel like they're everywhere. When our kids were young, we took intentional steps to minimize the number of toys in our home, but even then, sometimes we felt like we were winning the battle, and other times we felt like we were losing. But I did want to make a video offering some of the practical tips we used to help minimize the number of toys in our home. I think you'll find them helpful. Hopefully, you'll have some helpful tips to add in the comments section below, and we can all encourage one another to be the most intentional parents that we can be. Of course, the exact ideal number of toys will vary from family to family, if there even is one, but hopefully each of these tips will be helpful to those of you who know that the ideal number is certainly less than you have today. Number one. Be convinced that fewer toys is better than more. As with any minimizing or simplifying project, it always begins with a heartfelt belief that less is better and desirable. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you already believe this to be true when it comes to toys. But if not, be reminded that studies show fewer toys leads to deeper play, more creativity, longer attention spans, and better social skills. Number two, analyze your own motivation for purchasing toys. Most children don't buy toys for themselves. Someone else does. So if there are too many toys in your home, start with yourself. Why are there so many toys in your home? A healthy look at your own motivations may go a long way in solving this problem. Number three, choose quality over quantity. You and your children will benefit more from toys that are chosen for their quality and purpose than for the sheer quantity. And just like everything else in life, too many toys will always distract from the most important and helpful ones. Number four, declutter often. Most likely, you need to make a clean sweep of your children's toys right now. Removing the low-hanging fruit, toys that are no longer used or broken or missing pieces, is a great place to start and shouldn't take too long. Put the clean, unused toys in boxes and donate them to a medical center, nonprofit, local church, homeless shelter, orphanage, school, or Goodwill. After that, you'll need to stay on top of the clutter by purging on a regular basis and going beyond the low-hanging fruit. But the first decluttering purge is an important one. Number five, set a physical boundary for the toys in your home. Whether it's a container, a shelving unit, a closet, set a confined physical space for your children's toys. And once the space is full, there's no room to add more toys or some need to be removed. Help your children understand that principle by clearly marking out the boundaries. Number six, don't give in to fads. Just like clockwork, toy companies will generate a new toy fad every few months by artificially generating a cultural buzz. If done well, this artificial buzz will become mainstream and will no longer feel artificial, but it is, and it will always pass. You don't need to give in just because every other parent is buying that toy. Number seven, keep a healthy, realistic attitude toward toy companies and toy stores. They may tell you that their main goal is to help or educate your child, but oftentimes they're driven most by their bottom line. Number eight, avoid duplicate toys. Instead, require your children to learn the life lesson of sharing, generosity, cooperation, and compromise. Number nine, watch less television. Consider the fact that marketers are brilliant at shaping the desires of men and women, young and old. Now imagine giving them hours each day to shape your child's mind, and you'll quickly realize that you don't stand a chance. So be sure to limit the screen time for your kids. Number 10, don't give in to temper tantrums at the store. Every time you give in to a temper tantrum at the store just to avoid a scene, you embolden your child to do it again. They quickly learn how to manipulate you into getting what they want. So don't worry about the scene that's taking place in public. Wise parents in the store will respect you for not giving in. Number 11, equip your children to make wise choices. 
Always involve your kids in the decluttering process. Help them make decisions about which toys should stay and which should go. This will serve them well as a child and into adulthood. Number 12, limit your toys to. Kids will always learn more from an example than from words. If your life is caught up in always needing to own the latest fashion, technology, or product on the market, theirs will be too. And it would be unreasonable to expect anything less. In fact, probably the most important step you can take to declutter your kids' toys is to declutter your stuff first. Keeping fewer toys will never be easy. It will always require thought and intentionality, but it will always result in your children learning to value who they are more than what they have. And that always makes it worth the effort. Hey everybody, Joshua here. I wanna let you know that my new book, Things That Matter, Overcoming Distraction to Pursue a More Meaningful Life is now available everywhere books are sold. Things That Matter is a book about living well. It's a book about overcoming the distraction of a world focused on all the wrong things so we can reach the end of our lives with minimal regrets. And I know it'll challenge you to live a more meaningful life. So pick up a copy today.